Oh, hello there. I'm sorry you can't get to come round the gardens at present. They show in quite pretty, with the primroses and the wallflowers and the early bluebells. Things is early this year, after that mild winter and now that warm spell. Ah, you do with a drop of rain, truth be told. <laughs> I'm not early, though. I'm late. Only just potting on me strawberries. Been outside all winter. Yeah, growing as runners on the, the big stock plants. Yeah, now I'm potting them on, put them in the greenhouse, and well, early strawberries is on the way. Well, early years. <laughs> when I uh, started work up at the manor house as a boy, it's one of the first things I learned eh, was uh, how to bring on early strawberries. <laughs> yeah, would have been uh, twelve or thirteen, eh, just after I left school. Taken on as under gardener I was. <laughs> Most people laugh when he tells them that today. Under gardener? What's that? <laughs> uh, times have changed. Eh? The big houses in them days, well, there'd be head gardeners, glass house gardeners, under gardeners, and indoors, well, they'd have a butler, housekeeper, chambermaids, housemaids, under housemaids, and oh, all sorts in the kitchens. Ha! Ah, ah, staff was everywhere. Ooh. You'd be in trouble if you had to keep yourself to yourself in them days. <laughs> Ah, times have changed. Mm. Plants don't change, though. Well, not really. Fashions change. Eh? And they, they keep breeding new ones, but well, they still grow the same from seeds or cuttings or grafts. They still need watering and feeding. Well, them tomatoes, them greedy beggars. <laughs> Yeah, they, they still need the sunlight. Uh, ah. Uh, but I reckon what I learned all them years ago as a young un still stands. <laughs> Mind. <laughs> it's a few tasks I was given back then I don't bother with nowadays. I tends to let a few weeds grow here and there. <laughs> well, truth be told, some of them are quite pretty. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm lucky. I lives on my own, but I got a nice little garden. I spend all my life working outdoors with my hands in the soil. Sixty years getting dirt under my fingernails and <laughs> without a worry. Now I'm being told to wash them all the time. <laughs> Still, I reckon if I gets to eat these strawberries, then well... It'll be worth it. But I had better get on or there'll be late strawberries. You take care of yourself now. And, well, maybe you can come and have a look round the gardens when things is better. Now, before you washes your hands, you put some in the soil. Get them dirty. Hmm? <laughs> you won't regret it. I live in just one room now. It's tolerable. I have everything I need. My books, my records, my papers, my notes. They bring meals to my room. Nothing exciting, but it does. They're very good to me. They let me have the collection. And that's what keeps me sane. Though some might argue the point. That's how I fill my days. Going through records. Checking. 
locations, dates, times, weather conditions, everything that happened on the day. Yeah, logging and remembering. Numbers caught, species, type or aberration. Important, that. Each of these little creatures, my companions, tells a story, recalls a memory, a place, a time, a person. Hmm. Sometimes we can cheat the finality of death by what comes after. Beauty can be preserved. The mind can be stimulated. I can sit and look and remember for hours. Yeah. Take this one. Carterocephalus palemon. First described in 1798 by Dr. Abbott, he called it the Duke of York Fritillary. Soon after, it was renamed the Checkered Skipper. Only one known aberration, ab scabellatia, where the orange spots are enlarged or continuous on the forewing. Hmm. Foo plant, false broom, flight period mid-May to mid-June, habitat, grassy woodland rye. This one here is the last chequered skipper ever seen in England. I saw him when he was alive, flying in the sun, darting low over the grass. He stopped for a moment to feed on a bugle flower, the last of his brood, his last moment and I netted him. Hmm. His lordship was very pleased. It completed his set. Hmm. Hesperidae. The skippers. Large, small, Essex, Lulworth, dingy, grizzled, silver spotted. A hundred of each. And now a century of the checkered. He didn't know it was the last one. He didn't care. I knew. I did. So now I'm here and we keep each other company, Palamon and me with our memories in our room of what was once outside and who dinner time I wonder what it'll be today Peace and a cuckoo. <laughs> hmm. It might change my mood, but I'm a bit irritable this morning. I didn't get a very good night's sleep. My peace has been disturbed. Oh, no, no, not you. Coffee will undoubtedly uh, restore the balance somewhat. But in the absence of my other luxury, the trusty woodbine, I, I may have to up the caffeine intake somewhat. Hmm. Hmm. My peace disturbed. Well, there's an irony. Half of the world's peace has been disturbed. So I retire to my isolated cave hotel here in Borodal to escape the kind attentions of Herr Hitler.
only to find that Keswick's very own little Adolf was banging on my rock face last night, ordering me to extinguish my candle in case it attracted the attention of the Luftwaffe. <laughs> You've got no blackout curtain? No. Nor do I have doors, windows, or a welcome mat. This is a cave. <laughs> if the Luftwaffe decided it is worth their while dropping their dynamite on a candlelit cave in Cumberland because they assume it is Mr. Churchill's secret HQ, they lit them. <laughs> uh, it will only result in false celebrations in Berlin and the, the possible rearrangement of some of my interior furnishings. <laughs> I offered him a coffee. It was a cold evening. I thought we could discuss matters, but oh, no, no, no. No, he, he refused, decided he needed to get back to Keswick and finish his rounds, <laughs> drawing the curtains. Mm. Oh. Wish I had a cigarette. It doesn't seem right somehow, starting the day on an empty lung. Hmm. Do you know one of my climbing party who once tried to persuade me to give up smoking? Mm. Said it was bad for my health. Oh. I let her have her say. But later on in the afternoon, when I was leading her up the west chimney of Scarfell, I noticed she was somewhat out of breath and nerve. So I, I gently pointed out that um, climbing can also be bad for your health. <laughs> but if, like me, you've happily waved seven decades through without either a cough or a broken limb, then it seems a shame to give up either. <laughs> she was very quiet for the rest of the day. I... I think she saw my point. Hmm. Yeah. Where is that letter? Ah, I have started to write a letter to complain about the infringement on my liberty. Ah, uh, dear Mr. Churchill, I realise you must be a busy man, but I feel compelled to... Now look, I don't mean to be rude, but we've only just met. You could be German spies. So... I'm going to finish this on my own in private. Goodbye. Scrooge saw an alteration in the phantom's hood and dress. It shrunk, collapsed, and dwindled down into a bedpost. Bah! Humbug! Another of Master Dickens' drug-induced hallucinations. That man has no imagination or inspiration without fueling himself up to the eyeballs with some opium concoctions. Mm. Oh, I hate Christmas. Ah! I didn't always. No. There were some jolly, happy, festive times in my childhood. And even after Mother died and I went away to boarding school, Father tried to give me and my little sister Fanny as happy a Christmas as he could manage. No, but life changes. And what is Christmas now but a tawdry spending circus? Hmm? <laughs> a season of greed, gluttony and excess. And who is promulgating this wasteful and unnecessary overindulgence? Hmm? <laughs> oh yes, that libelous slanderer, Mr. Charlatan Dickens, as I call him. He's been publishing this Christmas cattle story of his in weekly episodes. <laughs> Staves, he calls them. Ha! Stains, I call them. Uh, stains on my character. All because he wouldn't even know for an nonsense. A revenge story, that's what this is, yeah. Uh, a twisting of the facts to blacken my name. Uh, oh, for a perceived wrong done to him. Ha! Oh, but what do you know? Hmm? Oh, thanks to the charlatan. You've no idea. Marley... Cratchit, Dick Bell, the Fezziwigs, oh, all of them painted so far from the truth just to make me look bad. Hmm? <laughs> Jacob Marley, my business partner of some ten years standing, was not a ghost or even dead. <laughs> no, 
No, he is very much alive and at this very moment enjoying the fraudulent fruits of his furtive financial fabrications gained from years of filching the funds, cheating the chain, and pilfering the profits. <laughs> oh, he is a duplicitous, deceitful double dealer, an embezzler, a peculator involved in trickery, treachery, chicanery, and, as my thesaurus would have it, Humbuggery! Ha! Yes, he is in fact a humbugger! <laughs> the only true thing in that first stave is about the door knocker, because I had Jacob's nameplate melted down and fashioned into a door knocker of his likeness, so that his face would continually be smacked against the door that he used to darken. Ha! Oh, and as for the others? Nephew Fred is an inveterate gambler, the Fezziwigs run an opium den, my friend Dick eloped with my fiancée Belle, and as for Tiny Tim, six foot three inches tall and with a girth to match. Oh, that wretched little child grew into a monster and has made poor Bob's life a misery. Ah, you didn't know that, did you? There's a lot you don't know. 15th of December, 1832. Visit from a young man calling himself Boz. These are some of the best short sketch stories ever written, he trumpeted, confident to the point of arrogance. Even Cratchit raised an eyebrow at his insistence in his own abilities. I was equally insistent that Mr. Minns and his cousin and our next-door neighbour were not titles that Scrooge and Scrooge would be interested in. Just stick to the parliamentary reports, I told him. He flounced out, pronouncing he would take his business elsewhere and that I would regret my decision. Hmm. Little did I know. I expect you're wondering why I'm not sitting counting money. Well, that's another of the charlatan's little inventions, I'm afraid. Oh. I'm a printer, not a money lender. Oh, there'll be a few more surprises for you in all of these. My diaries. Yes, and there'll be a few more surprises for that charlatan, too, when I publish them. Well, that's what I'm trying to do, you see. Get them all into print before he has a chance to tell any more lies about me. I want to tell the truth and put the record straight. I want you to get to know the real Mr. Scrooge. <laughs> now, if... You'll excuse me, I need to get on. Hmm.